Data visualization is a major topic in statistics and data science. And in this video, I'm going to introduce you to a few of the main ways to visualize data that are used depending on whether you have categorical or numerical data. Most categorical data are displayed using what's called a bar plot. They are called bar plots because it's a plot with bars in it. Pretty straightforward there. So let's say we survey a bunch of people. We ask them, how do you get your news? And so we report the number of people or the uh, percent of people who are saying yes to these different types of media. So we get, you know, 40% of people get their news from the TV and so on. By the way, I'm, these are just all made up numbers here. I didn't actually do this survey. This is just for illustration purposes. So these are categorical data and we use bar plots to visualize them. Now, if you have numerical data, you would probably use something called a histogram. Now, a histogram looks initially like a bar plot, but it's a little bit different. In the next slide, I'll explain the difference between a histogram and a bar plot. So what we do with numerical data is bin the data into some reasonable categories or bins like this. So we might have height in centimeters from 60 to 70 centimeters, 70 to 80, and so on. And then we survey a bunch of king penguins in Antarctica, and we want to know how, how tall they are. So then we find that, you know, 28% of penguins are between 80 and 90 centimeters, and some of them are shorter, and some of them are taller. Now, again, this looks a little bit like a bar plot, but they're actually a little bit different. So this is a bar plot. This is a histogram. There is a key difference between a bar plot and a histogram. Bar plots are for categorical data and histograms are for numerical data. And what is the, the main difference? The main difference is that we can swap the locations of the x-axis bins uh, for a bar plot, but not for a histogram. So for example, we can swap internet and word of mouth. That's totally fine. It's kind of arbitrary how I've ordered them here. You could have any ordering that you want. But here, changing the ordering doesn't make sense. So you wouldn't put 60 to 70 centimeters over here. So if you can swap the order of the bars, then you're looking at a bar plot. And if it doesn't make sense to swap the order, then these are numeric data and you're looking at a histogram. I want to talk briefly about using lines instead of bars in these kinds of plots. So what do I mean by using lines instead of bars? Well, you can imagine instead of drawing each um, each bin as being a, a box that starts at zero and goes up to whatever height it has, you can imagine drawing a line that goes just from the top of that bar to the top of this bar to the top of this bar and so on. So you can also do that in this case. Now, the thing is, you're not really supposed to use lines instead of bars. And the reason is that when you draw lines instead of bars, what you're actually making, what you're actually assuming or displaying in the data is that there is an intermediate value between these two. So showing a line here actually means that you think that the, the item between newspaper and internet has a value of 50%. Now, that doesn't even make sense. I have a hard time even saying this sentence because what, what it doesn't make, what is in between a newspaper and an internet? And what if we swap these? Then, you know, what is in between newspaper and word of mouth? And why do we think that that would be at 50%? It doesn't even make sense. On the other hand, you can see here, it does kind of make sense. You can imagine if we would split these bins up into finer groups. So this was maybe 60 to 65. And then we had another group in here for 65 to 70. We could kind of imagine that, you know, that group would be somewhere around 15, because it's reasonable here to expect that a value in between this bin and this bin would be somewhere around here. Now, we don't know exactly that it would be here. But we can expect it's reasonable to assume that that could work. So the conclusion here is that lines should never be used for categorical data and lines can sometimes be used for numerical data. The last visualization method that I want to introduce you here is called a pie chart. You can see why it's called a pie chart. And this is used for categorical data, but there is a condition on the data. So pie charts cannot be used for any type of data. They can only be used for data that sum up to 100%.
If your data do not sum up to 100%, then you cannot use a pie chart. So here I asked people, what is your favorite ice cream flavor? Most people prefer chocolate or vanilla. And strawberry, I guess, is... Uh, oh, I guess more people like strawberry than chocolate. I have no idea what's going on with these people, but let's not think too much about that. 